Seatbelts and airbags in cars save passengers' lives. Parachutes save people who, for a variety of reasons, exit a plane in mid-flight. So why aren't parachutes provided to passengers on commercial airline flights in case of emergencies? Because they almost certainly would not save anyone's life. Why? First of all, let's look at parachuting basics. When your average daredevil skydives for fun, the plane is typically traveling at between 80 and 110 miles per hour. When the skydiver jumps, tandem and accelerated freefall jumps occur between 10,000 and 13,000 feet, while static jumps can be as low as 3,500 feet. Student drivers choosing the easiest tandem jump, where the newbie is physically and securely attached to an experienced instructor, are still required to undergo a half hour of basic ground instruction. When skydivers leave a plane, they do it alone or in small groups. When successive groups will be jumping, they try to keep separated by anywhere between 500 and 1500 feet. This is often accomplished by waiting until the preceding group is back under the tail to 45 degrees behind the airplane or several seconds in between groups. Experienced skydivers can make even riskier jumps, although when descents begin at higher than 15,000 feet, the risk of hypoxia and being significantly affected by altitude increases dramatically and divers are less able to make effective safe decisions at critical times. Therefore, divers who jump from 15,000 feet or higher carry supplemental oxygen. Further, each parachute weighs around 40 pounds and the equipment is expensive. To be fully outfitted with rig, main, reserve, add altimeter, jumpsuit, helmet, and goggles can run between $5,900 and $9,000. But maybe a whole plane parachute will work. There is hope, however. Over the past few years, many small planes have been equipped with whole plane parachutes that slow the craft's descent. As of late 2013, the largest planes equipped with these safety devices carry five people, but plans are in the works for putting them on larger crafts. As one manufacturer said, there is no doubt that big commercial airlines of the future will be equipped with some kind of parachute recovery system. Why do planes need to fly so high? Most commercial airplanes cruise at an altitude of nearly 35,000 feet, around 6.62 miles in the air. If you think about it, that's quite high, isn't it? What's wrong with flying just a couple miles above the ground as long as the plane clears all ground structures, example, towers and skyscrapers? Well, first of all, the height at which most planes fly is not some arbitrarily chosen number. There are very good reasons why planes fly so high in the sky. One of the main reasons commercial airplanes fly so high is air resistance. You see, the higher you go above the ground, the thinner the atmosphere becomes, and therefore the less resistance there is on the flight of the plane. Another important reason why commercial airlines fly so high up is that at the height, they get more stable air and don't usually have to worry about clouds and weather-related events. Although planes can still fly through clouds or storms, they will experience a lot of turbulence. This can cause discomfort in the passengers and even create a panic on the plane. Clearing obstacles. This one is sort of obvious. As a pilot, you don't want to duck and dart through towers, buildings, and other ground structures while flying a plane. Regardless of how cool that may sound to some of you, it's simply too unsafe, not to mention impossible. This is not just above ground structures. Cruising at 35,000 feet also ensures that a plane is well above where most birds fly. There have been many cases of bird strike incidents, but the one that got the most attention was the case of US Airways Flight 1549 back on January 15, 2009. An airplane, Airbus 320, made a miraculous unpowered landing in the Hudson River after being hit by a flock of birds shortly after taking off from LaGuardia Airport in New York City. Safety Cushion Say that you're flying a commercial jet just a mile above the ground and something goes wrong. The plane starts to plummet. You know that the problem causing the plane to descend rapidly can be fixed but the plane is falling too fast and you simply don't have enough time to fix the problem. Why are planes nearly always painted white? It's cheaper. Paint adds between 600 to 1200 pounds, 273 to 544 kilograms of weight to an aircraft. Extra weight means more fuel is burned, and 544 kilograms equates to around eight passengers. Furthermore, airlines often end up selling their aircraft to other carriers. They'll find it harder to do so if the color scheme is anything but white. It keeps the plane cool. In the same way that lighter colors dominate our summer wardrobes because they are cooler, 
Aircrafts are painted white to reflect sunlight. The main reason why aircraft are painted white or light colors is to reflect sunlight and minimize both the heating and any potential damage from solar radiation. Search and Rescue It depends where the crash occurs, but should a plane go down, a white fuselage may well be easier to spot more from the air. Another good reason for avoiding color. Why can't an airplane just fly into space? Why do we need rockets? Airplanes are able to fly because air moving along the wings holds them up. We often think of air as being too thin and lightweight to exert much force. But for a fast aircraft with sufficiently large wings of a cleverly chosen shape, our atmosphere can do the job. As the plane's engines move the wings forward, the air has to flow both over and under them. The wings are designed so that the net effect is that the air pushes them upward, countering the downward pull of gravity. Large passenger planes can't fly much higher than 12 kilometers, 7.5 miles. The air is too thin above that altitude to hold the plane up. Some kinds of planes can fly much higher, and one special NASA plane named Helios flew to about 30 kilometers, 19 miles, which is far higher than any other plane has traveled. So how is a rocket different from an airplane? Rockets do not depend on air, even for burning their fuel. Rockets take advantage of some basic laws of nature that were discovered by the brilliant scientist Isaac Newton late in the 17th century. One of these, called Newton's Third Law, says that for every action there is an equal and opposite reaction. This law also tells us that, to build a powerful rocket, we need to shoot out a lot of high-speed material, opposite the direction we want the rocket to go. That is exactly what a rocket engine is designed to do. Most rockets use high-speed exhaust gases from burning rocket fuel to propel themselves up and away from Earth's surface to the vacuum of space. Unlike planes, they don't need air to lift them up. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that push notification button to be the first who will see new awesome videos.